welcome to Catholic Current, where we give you an update on events affecting the church in the United States. We are coming to you from Orlando, Florida, where the bishops have just concluded their second day of the public session of their spring plenary assembly. Bishop Cousins, chair of the Committee on Evangelization and Catechesis, gave an update on upcoming events as we move into the parish year of the Eucharistic Revival, which will have pilgrimages and processions throughout the country. Just last week, we completed our pilot pilgrimage. That is, we did a test run of this, and we went from the, the cathedral in Fort Wayne, South Bend, to the co-cathedral, co the cathedral in Fort Wayne to the co-cathedral in South Bend. 110 miles we did on foot in eight days. The response was incredible. People came out of their homes and houses to kneel as the Lord was coming by with the pilgrims. Others stopped to ask questions. Many people from the parishes they visited walked all day, some as many as 20 miles in a day. One little girl seeing the procession coming down her street, ran in, put on her first communion dress and came out and knelt down as Jesus came by. The bishops discussed a number of initiatives today. One of those initiatives was the approval of the pastoral plan for Hispanic Latino ministry. Bishop Cantu, chair of the Subcommittee on Hispanic Affairs, spoke about the importance of ministering to Hispanic and Latino Catholics. We believe that this comprehensive response will inspire us to strengthen Hispanic Latino ministries at the local level in every diocese and in old parishes where our Hispanic brothers and sisters live. The bishops also voted to proceed with making updates to the ethical and religious directives in Catholic health care. Also known as ERDs, these directives guide Catholic hospital and health care facilities. Archbishop Rolio explains what's next in this process. Should the ERDs be revised or not? And then it'll be up to the Committee on Doctrine to determine uh, what sort of considerations will be included in that revision. And then it, when, when they're ready with the document, that'll be presented to the bishops, um, perhaps at the fall assembly. The bishops also voted to update the document, Persons with Disabilities in the Life of the Church. It has been 45 years since the last update. Bishop Burbage, liaison to the National Catholic Partnership on Disabilities, spoke with Catholic Current about the importance of ministering to people with disabilities. 45 years, it's, I think it's time for a, a renewed document and it was enthusiastically uh, approved by the bishops to move forward with the draft and really a way of showing our, our solidarity, our love uh, for uh, all of our brothers and sisters with disabilities and it's meant to be a pastoral document uh, and it's meant to uh, guide uh, parishes and dioceses of how we can be of greater support to persons with disabilities, uh, making sure everyone is welcomed into our communities and have the access that they need. And uh, so it's meant to be pastoral, practical, um, and certainly, uh, you know, from the floor, we heard a number of bishops saying that in this document, sadly, in this day and age, there will be a, a greater uh, section emphasis of dealing with mental health as well and, and the impact that that is having on so many people's lives. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Catholic Current. You can find out more about any of this week's topics by visiting us online at usccb.org. I'm Mara Moser coming to you from Orlando, Florida. We leave you with a message from Archbishop Pierre Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. When we engage up with people's real experiences as messy as that reality may be, we give them hope because they realize that Christ is willing to be with them no matter where they are on their journey. If they come to church to encounter Christ, it will be because Christ has first come to them. Let us therefore be ambassadors for Christ.